Is it hard when there is a really original idea that is really different to get that made because it is original and it is scary and it's not a comic book movie or, or whatever? I, I feel like right now the, the thing that distinguishes independent film truly, and I think everybody here is a, is a testament to that, is the voices have to be truly original. That's the only, that's all that they have. Because now, you know, it's harder, and, you know, it's hard to find money, it's hard to find screens, all the different ways in which, you know, we kind of came into the business with the assumptions we made about the kind of stories you told and how you financed them and how they went out into the world. It's all changing around us. And I think it's, you know, it's in order to keep making the kind of movies that I want to make, um, or the kind of stories I want to tell, I should say, <clears throat> we've had to get uh, a lot more uh, flexible and a lot more aggressive about the fact that we may not always be telling theatrical stories. And um, I mean, Mildred Pierce obviously is a good example of that because that came about because Todd Haynes wanted to do something in longer form. Um, but I think a few years ago, if you had said that he, w he would do something for HBO, and not only that, but Kate Winslet would be doing that as her next thing after she won her Oscar for The Reader, uh, people would have said you were crazy. Um, it's a real sign of the times to me, and I think in order to keep telling stories as original and as authentic as we want to, we have to start looking at all the different ways that you can tell stories, and we have to take our cue from all the different ways that all of us are consuming stories. So you're mentioning changing distribution methods. Does any of you guys just jump on in, like how is the changing face of distribution helping, hurting, challenging you? What do you guys think about it? Well, I think, I think it, it has to help because that's what's happening. You know, one observation that I had after producing Made in China, because we, it's a little movie, no stars, it's a good movie, critically well received, but, but just, you know, no one was really interested in distributing the film, and after really doing something I'd never done before, which was to really investigate self-distribution, what I began to realize is that the, the, the tools of distribution seem to be catching up with the tools of production in that you can get a movie out there to be seen where you know five six years ago with the digital revolution you know we can all go out with a camera and the editing software is, is, is it's very achievable to make a movie but how are people actually going to see it and I think with the advent of social media and also just young people taking their content in a different way than than I did um, and so they're more open to watching something on the web or watching something on YouTube or you know, Netflix is just a part of our vernacular where it just, it just wasn't even five, seven years ago. So um, all of that is changing, all of it's real, and if, um, you know, we can't just rely on a theatrical release anymore for, for, our, for our movies to be seen. So I think part of what you see field producers doing is looking at content, looking at things that might be more um, producible for digital distribution, be that, you know, internet or um, web series or, or things like that, that um, can have very high quality in, in both in terms of production value and, and content. You guys all mentioned how hard it is to do this job. What is the hardest thing about it? Uh, I find it really hard to just constantly get rejected on an emotional <coughs> level. I'd say the the, the other thing is just dealing with disappointment all the time because you kind of ha all have this great meeting about how good the script's going to be and then the, the, the writer will go off and work on the script and it will come in and it will be really disappointing. And I think the hardest thing about the job is finding a good story idea and executing that story idea <coughs> in the screenplay. And uh, I think when we go to the movies, we're constantly disappointed <laughs> and the reason that we're disappointed has to do sometimes with the... the, the you know, shortcomings of the director or a performance or some weak link in the chain, but I think more often than not, it's that the story idea to begin with isn't that great of a story idea, or the script itself isn't executed the way that it could or should have been. 
And I think that's, for me, that's always been the hardest part and the real struggle is to find stories that are worth telling and somehow get the screenplay to be worthy of that dream. What do you know now that you wish you knew then when you started out doing this? Every producer deals with the rejection um, differently and the way I've, I've come, the way I deal with it um, is ha I have a lot of balls in the air so that um, if I get a no, I get a no on one thing, I get a yes on something else. And usually during the course of a day, like the ups and downs are crazy. They're, it's bad and terror and good and bad and good, like all through the course of the day. And that, that's kind of what I've, what I've, what I started doing nervously because everyone said, find something you love and throw all your energy into it and, and that's how you do it. And I think that works for some people, but what I've come to learn is that doesn't work for me. It's too disappointing to get no's when you're just focusing like that. So, so I guess what I'd say is that I've, I've learned to kind of spread out my <coughs> producerial qualities over a slate of projects.